Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 20 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing mainly on text strings in C and basically how to import them or take them in from the console and store them in your program. And um, basically this tutorial isn't really going to be based too much on learning new import techniques, but more on just how to import or take in the information of strings in C. So anyway, it should be good, good tutorial to learn or good information to learn nonetheless. So anyway, here goes. So um, to start out, in some different languages, if anybody's familiar with any other languages, um, for instance, in Java, there is a dedicated, uh, basically a type of string, and that string class that they've made holds, holds um, basically. It's like a container of characters. Uh, so right here we have a text string, hello world. And that's a tech that's literally a text string. And that is, as you can see, it's just a container of a bunch of separate characters. So in C, that's real that's actually how it works. It's it's just a character array. It holds a bunch of characters that you type in. So you set um, the amount of characters, or the maximum amount of characters that you want to hold. Uh, when we create our character array, and that's how it basically creates a container to hold those characters. So, um, to start out, we just do character, our type character, to, so it knows what actual type it's bringing in. And this is how we use uh, text strings in C. And now we're just going to make uh, an array, and we're going to give it uh, 50 elements, because that's, you know, it's a fair size for a little bit of text. So, there, that's basically how text strings work. So that means that this array is going to hold a maximum of 50 characters inside of it. So we're going to have 50 things, basically. So now, um, when we uh, want to import this, we can do it the scanf way. There are other ways I'm going to be teaching you, um, possibly in the next tutorial, actually. But um, basically, um, there's going to be different ways that you can import stuff and there are different ways that work much better so um, and this is just the easiest way to explain how this works so again like our last tutorial we do double quotes and uh, unlike uh, before we use percent %d for integers and percent %c for just a character now we want to use percent %s for string and so that's uh, now it knows that that's the type that's going to be brought in. It's going to be bringing in a string of text. So a string of text, just as recap, is um, any number, symbol, or uh, letter on your keyboard. So now, when we uh, in the previous tutorial, when we were pointing to our integer, we would point to um, that integer name. So we'd use the address of operator, like so, and then we'd point to um, whatever whatever it was. Like if we called it my int, we'd point it to my int. And arrays work a little differently. Um, when we're using arrays, we have to point to the zeroth element in the array, or the first one, I guess. The, you know what I mean. It's the, the first element that actually exists, because the arrays work. This array is 0 to 49, just 50 whole elements. So when we use arrays, we have to point to the zeroth element, so we use the address of operator, my array, and then in square brackets, we type in zero because that's our zeroth element, and that's where we want to start. So that's one way of doing that, and that's the, it's always the way you have to do it, though. You always have to point to the zeroth element, and you never want to point to like, you know, halfway through the array because that's pretty much just stupid, uh, unless you have a good reason, but for this case, uh, there's no real good reason, so uh, yeah, don't do it. So anyway, we're pointing to our zeroth element, but now I'm going to show you another way that um, might not you might not really understand how it works, and reason being is it doesn't really make any sense. Um, but it's a simplified way that they created to easily work with um, work with pointers. So basically, we have this right here. We have this address of my array and zeroth element, but there's a simplified form which is this right here. Just typing in my array. And that works the exact same way as this works. It points to the zeroth element, 
I know it doesn't, it looks like just the top value. It looks like the values that would be in my array, but in dealing with pointers, it's actually pointing to the zeroth element. So this right here equal to this right here, exact same thing. And I'll show you uh, this one in a second, but right now I'm gonna leave it at that. So now I'm just gonna print this out again using our percent %s for string, and then we're gonna use our array. So now let's go build and run this. When I run, it's gonna look for that I'm typing in something, and I'm gonna just type in my name, hit return. As you can see, this is a scanf right here. It's storing each individual character in the array. So the L is stored in the zeroth element, and then after that, it goes to the first element, second element, third element, and then fourth element. And that's how that works. So this is a range from element zero to the fourth element. Okay, and then printf just reprints uh, whatever is actually in the array, the elements that are in the array, the ones that we add in, because there's nothing else in it right now. So that's how that works. And um, to demonstrate, though, how a little further how this works, I'm going to create another printf, and I'm going to print out an individual character in this string. And again, this just em emphasizes the point that it's not just a string, it's just a bunch of characters in the, um, it's a bunch of characters inside of the container. So if I get a, if I'm going to um, bring up character and let's say I'm going to print or print, I want to print out the second element. And so if I go to build and run this, go to our console, build and run, type in my name, and actually let me stop this for a second. I just want to um, put in a backslash n so that it brings it down a notch or brings it to hits the return key basically. So when I save this and I, it's going to look for my name. This is at the scanf. So I enter my name. It's gone. For, it's going to enter it from my array zero to my array four, and then uh, it reprints the whole array right here. And then the backslash n brings it down a line to here. And here we are printing out a single character in the array at the second spot. So L was the zeroth. The U was the first, and the C was the second element, so it prints out the second element. And that's just an emphasis on how the arrays work. So now I'm also going to change up my um, original, uh, the address of my array zero. I'm going to use the cheat way that I told you earlier, which is just my array, and I'll show you that it works the exact same way. Ooh, that rhymed. So type in my name, and as you can see, it prints. Uh, than what's in the array again. So now I want to show you one of the downfalls though of scanf because uh, so far you're thinking, ooh, it's kind of cool. And um, yeah, it's it works for mm, a lot of things, but doesn't work for everything. So to show you an example of this, if I try to type in more than one, say I just type in part of my last name here, and I hit return, and oh, uh, look at that. It only types in the first name. And the problem is scanf only works for, um, as soon as it sees white space, it's done, and everything else is just zeroed out. So everything beyond this, uh, as soon as it sees this white space, it says, screw everything else. Um, that's all, this first part is all I'm going to care about. So that's um, one of the downfalls of scanf, and that's coming up in new or later tutorials, uh, how to get by that with different functions. So anyway, that is uh, the tutorial on basically text strings and how to bring them into your program using scanf anyway. So if you have any questions on this tutorial, uh, please send me a message or if it's um, a big question anyway. And if it's simple enough, yeah, you can just leave it in the comments. And um, also more of a newsflash thing than anything, I've also put a new... Uh, YouTube moderator thing on the channel so if uh, it's basically what that means is that um, it has a question just basically saying that you can give any suggestion you want to the channel so it's basically a place where you can just say anything that you want me to change or add or do I don't know anything just tell me what uh, you want the channel to do and change in the tutorials whatever just leave your suggestions and it'll show up there so, uh, yeah, just if you have any suggestions, go to the channel and leave them there. All right, so see you next tutorial.